and welcome back guys to the Spacey Choppers Review Channel where we try to review a little bit of everything. Now I'm here in Manhattan again and judging by the intro of the video and possibly by the title you could see that I have the iPhone XR in my possession product red it looks beautiful but wait there's a different side to this story I got the product red iPhone as my daily driver let's dive into that and see why so the iPhone XR product red first of all why product red it's a beautiful color and taking off the case you'll understand why let's rub that off a little bit taking off the case it is one hell of a beautiful color and these aluminum rails are fantastic to hold but we'll get into that into build quality and you know, stuff a little bit later now let's go into the most controversial thing here it's the screen okay everybody's been talking about the screen everybody's been saying oh it's not 1080 oh where's my OLED oh where's my this that and the third honestly there's one thing you got to remember and that this is an LCD panel that's one and two it's an Apple made LCD panel so it's not just any regular LCD panel that you see from any cheap Chinese maker out there that's just putting out phones to put phones out you know what I'm saying this is an Apple made LCD it's a little bit above 720p at around 828p it's 17 I believe 1792 by 828 I'll put it somewhere here uh, but yeah it's not full 1080p am I mad about that no well some of you might be asking why am I not mad about that when I had the LG V30 with a quad HD display you know 2560 by 1440 to be honest really honest I actually prefer the colors on this I don't know about you but I like a little more true to life colors compared to the oversaturated black blacks and blue blues and red reds that an OLED can give I like the more natural colors the natural shadows the natural everything and that's what an LCD panel can give you and to be honest I've loved this LCD panel since the day I got the phone there's nothing controversial here there's nothing crazy this is a good screen regardless of the resolution it has a ppi of 326 that's perfectly fine i'm not going crazy over it if i want a better display i have my ipad that's what it's for and besides continuous watching on a small screen for videos is not good for your eyes guys remember you need your eyes anyways now it's a liquid retina hd display that's what apple calls it and to be honest it's probably one of the best lcds they've made so far even comparing to the 8 plus and the 8 you know, I know the 8 Plus is 1080p, but to be quite frank, this is pretty sharp. Can't lie on that. Really, I can't. Overall, so far, I've loved the screen. I couldn't give a damn about OLED. I couldn't give a damn about LCD. I couldn't give a damn about this little war. If it looks good to me, it looks good to me. Jonathan Morrison for TLD, he did a video. I'm going to link his video either down there or if I find out how to work the cards, I'm going to put it in the card up there. Jonathan made a video comparing this to the Pocophone. The Pocophone has a resolution of 2160 by 1080, so it is a 1080p display. But every single time, people chose the 10R over the Pocophone. Why is that? Because it's a damn good LCD. It looks bright, colors are sharp, video playback is great. It's just overall a pretty awesome display, regardless of it being sub 1080p. So screen, don't worry about it. There's nothing to worry about. Now let's get on to the build quality hell yes oh my god hell yes hell yeah the stainless steel sides on the 10r i'm 10r whoops the stainless steel sides on the 10s and 10s max are nice and all and the stainless steel sides on my lg v30 were pretty nice too i'm not gonna lie but you know what there's something about the way apple makes their 7000 series aluminum that it just feels that good it feels that good it's soft to the touch it's like a matte finish it feels that good i prefer this way over the stainless steel on the 10s and 10s max i prefer this way better because to be honest it scratches a lot less you know it doesn't scratch as hard as the 10s and 10s max and it just looks aesthetically pleasing i get it people like the stainless steel i don't like the shininess of the stainless steel i rather the matte and I love the matte finish of the aluminum. It just feels great, it looks great, and makes the phone 
have this certain heft to it. This Overall, actually, this phone has a really nice heft to it. It's heavier than my V30, that's for damn sure. But to be honest, that's not a bad thing. I love the heft of this phone. It makes me feel like I have something in my hand. And to be honest, that heft can also contribute to the battery life. I believe this is a 2900 or pocket 2900 and change milliamp hour battery in this bad bad boy right here and wow i'll get into the battery life just now though overall though the build quality the back all this glass on glass sandwich let me tell you something this is not a budget phone i don't know where you got it from that this was a budget phone maybe the top reviewers you know the top guys like mkbhd and and, and unbox therapy and everything apple Born, all these people maybe they told you that it was going to be a budget phone okay maybe you believe them maybe you didn't who knows this is not a budget phone, okay? For a $750 price tag, I expected premium and I got premium. This is a glass on glass sandwich with aluminum railings and it feels heavy, it feels great in the hand and it is premium to the bone. This is not a budget phone. Stop calling this a budget phone. It is a premium built phone for $750 starting price. Not budget, okay? You want a budget phone? Go get the Poco phone, okay? This is not budget. It's it's not OnePlus either, although OnePlus is probably the king of Android right now. You know, it's killing every single Android phone. But this is a premium build. That's a premium build too, yeah, but this is Apple premium build. You know they're gonna charge extra for their own stuff, but that's besides the point. This is a premium phone. It's not budget. Get that out of your head. The camera, it's awesome, okay? Don't worry about the extra lens missing. You don't need the telephoto lens. This takes wide angle portrait mode. Wide angle portraits. Wide angle portraits are a lot better than the telephoto portraits because the telephoto is zooming into your face. You don't want it to zoom into your face and, you know, cut out the background. That's the whole point of you taking the photo, right? You want the background with the people and you want that background blur. You want that bokeh, but you're not getting that bokeh. Well, you're not getting it fully what you want. You gotta step back far away, eight feet, nine feet, whatever the phone tells you to do to get the bokeh. You don't have to do that with this. Wide angle portraits are just the way to go. It, it takes a lot more of whatever scenery you have into play. It takes a lot more of, you know, the bokeh effect and you get the whole person or you get at least more of the person than you would with the extra telephoto lens. Trust me, the wide angle portraits on this is awesome. You're gonna love it. You're really, really gonna love it. To be honest, before I, even before I get to the end, because I can't contain myself, this is the iPhone you should have gotten this year. The XS and the XS Max, although great as an incremental upgrade as an S model, it, it proved nothing. It proved that, yes, Apple can make the phone faster again. This proved that Apple can still make a phone for seven to $800. This is the 128 gig for $799. It proves that Apple can still make a phone for seven to $800 and still, still beat out some of the top competitors in the Android game, no matter what, in terms of build quality, in terms of specs, in terms of camera, in terms of everything. I got snippets and videos and stuff that I took with this phone that I'm gonna lace at the end of this video just so you can see what those look like. Portrait mode does not take any pictures of anything unless it's a person, okay? That's with a rear camera. I found somewhat of a workaround to that, it's, it's not the best. It's not the best workaround at all, to be honest. And it kind of sucks that, I, that you have to do this, but you know, just in case you want those cute little pet photos and you want the portrait mode for the pet photos because this is not gonna recognize pets. Remember, it only recognizes human beings. The front camera is the same full truth depth sensor that's on the XS and the XS Max. Take the phone, take the XR, turn it around, put the, put the rear camera, put the front camera on, put it on portrait, and you can take a portrait mode of practically anything at that point. That's really my workaround to it, unless Apple comes out with some type of update to, you know, let the rear camera take portrait mode pictures of other things besides human beings. To be honest, I think that's a stupid omission and I think they could have worked around that, but you know what, it's okay, it's okay. I'm not mad, I'm just glad that this phone takes better damn pictures than any phone I've ever had in my life. And the front camera is amazing compared to the five megapixel potato that I had on the LG V30. We all know that was a bad camera in the front. So don't worry about the camera, the camera is great. Again, I'm gonna link the pictures at the end of the video, you can watch those. I'm gonna link a video, it's gonna be, that video has uh, the optical image stabilization that's in this camera. 
Plus, my Xeon, Q, my Xeon Smooth Q gimbal for smartphones. So it's gonna be extra buttery smooth. You're gonna understand that this camera can take some good damn video. Ooh, holy crap, it's awesome. Call quality on this has been nothing but great. I've had no dropped calls. Everything came through nice. Speakerphone is great, especially since you can have this and this pushing out for speakerphone. It sounds excellent for speakerphone. And a little, you know, whatever conference calls that you have. Call quality is awesome. Now, so underneath the hood of this thing is the Snapdragon 840. Ah, ah <laughs> I got you guys. Underneath the hood of this thing is Apple's A12 Bionic chip, which is a beast. There's, there's nothing else to say about it. It's a beast. It is a beast. Okay, it's a, it's a six-core hexacore. It's what it's supposed to be called. It's a hexacore beast. Okay, don't worry about the three gigs of RAM on this. Apple has the best. RAM management and a mobile operating system, period. Okay, three gigs of RAM, nothing. I've had no slowdowns, no lags, no nothing. You all good with this phone, trust me, trust me. Don't worry about the three gigs of RAM. It can manage. Games are awesome on this thing. Watching videos is awesome on this thing. I've had like, <laughs> what, 10, 20 apps open at the same time and all still reloaded from whence I left it. It's, it's a piece, okay? This thing is competing with the Note 9. With the Note 9, it's competing with competing with the OnePlus 6T, I think it is now, or 6, whatever. It's competing with OnePlus, it's competing with Samsung, it's competing with all the top dog name players that are running the Snapdragon 845 currently, and it is outperforming the Snapdragon 845 by a million percent. Okay, this is a powerhouse. Plus, the seven core GPU handles games so well, and the eight core neural engine helps with the AI stuff. And just helps take pictures so much more better. It does help with the rear camera and the front camera to make sure you get the best possible picture, period. So, the last thing before I just give you my final verdicts on this, because I know everybody else has gone over this phone already, and you know the specs, and you know the this, and you know the nitty gritty details of this phone. The last thing I wanna mention and touch on is battery life. Stop looking for other phones. This is the phone. This is the phone, okay? My LG B30, I leave, I leave home from work 6.30 a.m. to go to work. And I don't come home till 6 p.m. That's with commute and all that stuff going on, okay? I use Bluetooth. I use SoundCloud. I got it hooked up to my V-Motors. I got, I'm playing games. I'm sending texts. I'm sending emails. I'm watching videos. I'm doing the whole nine with this phone, okay? The whole nine. My V30 brought me home with about 15% or so. 15, okay? Take, now take that into consideration. Let me sit a little nicer here. Take that into consideration. 15%, maybe lower, and that's with power saving mode on. I go home with the 10R, right? I leave for work, I put it on, as a matter of fact, I, even, I love to put it on low power saving mode. I don't know if you can see it there. I love to put it on low power saving mode because it's not the kind of low power mode that's on Android. On Android, it completely dumbs down everything and you know, hard, hard stops everything. The low power mode on this for me, doesn't slow down anything at all, okay? I have no slowdown, even though it's on low power mode. But anyways, without low power mode, I go home with this phone from 6.30 a.m., 6.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. With, with the usage I have. And I'm a light to medium user. I'm not a heavy user by any means of the term. I'm not a heavy user by any, any means of the term, okay? I don't go hardcore with games. I don't go hardcore with video watching. I don't go hardcore, period. The highest I went is a high medium, that's it, okay? This phone, easily, easily, without power saving mode on, got me home with 50% at the end of the day, at the end of my day. What? Are you kidding me? 50, from 15, teen, to 15, five zero. And in low power saving mode, if I'm a light user on that day, 75%. If I'm, just, if I'm the medium user that I always am, or that I usually normally am, about 60% to 65%. I come home with that. This is a battery champ. No, no worries here. This is a damn battery champ. Consider this phone if you're looking for the best battery life, because I promise you, I promise you, you're gonna enjoy this thing more than you know, okay? Better battery life than the 10S, and to be honest, it's rivaling battery life with the 10S Max. 
XS Max comes in a little bit higher, but this is no slouch. This is right behind the XS Max, okay? 6.1 inch display. Because of that big display, you know they're gonna fit a bigger battery inside. I forgot to mention that, by the way, in the beginning. 6.1 inch display. Best size ever. Feels great in the hand. It's a little slimmer than my V30. It's overall awesome. But anyways, back to battery life. Battery life is nothing but superb on this phone. Don't go looking nowhere else if you want good battery life and you want an iOS device. Out of the three phones, this is the phone to get. So what are my final thoughts? I know I didn't go over all the other little nitty, nitty gritty stuff, you know. I know because everybody else has practically done that already. I'm here to give you what I think of the phone, what really is the real deal with this phone, and should you pick it up or not versus the 10s and 10s Max. That's a question number one. Pick it up versus the 10s or 10s Max. Hands down. Get this phone. Don't waste your money and go spend twelve hundred dollars, fifteen hundred dollars to get two hundred and fifty-six or five twelve. You don't need five twelve. Practically, you don't need two fifty-six. I got one twenty-eight for seven ninety-nine, and I joined the Apple Pay at the Apple Upgrade Program. So just in case the iPhone eleven, whatever it's called for next year, comes out and it's awesome, is awesome as all hell, because of that program. I don't have to pay the full two years. I can pay 12 months for this device, and then when that new phone comes out, I get the new phone. That's practically paying half. You're paying half for the phone, ladies and gents. Half. Think about it for a second. The reviewers out there don't tell you that stuff. They don't. I'm here to help you try and save money, because I have that college mind perspective, even though I'm a college grad. I have that college mind perspective on saving money. You want to save money, join the program, and upgrade. You know how much I'm paying a month for this phone? 40 bucks. You got a stable job? You keep paying for this phone like it's nothing. It's 40 bucks. Why are you arguing over 40 bucks? 40 bucks is easy to pay. Versus whatever you have to pay, you know, hands down if you want an unlocked version of this, that, and the third phone. Unlocked version of this is $7.99 plus tax right up front. Okay, you pay $800 something dollars for the phone, you're good to go. You don't have to worry about monthly payments. But for me, I wanted the monthly payments. I wanted to try. I wanted to tell you guys what the Apple Upgrade Program is about. So... Day I got it, $123.67 is what I paid for this phone the day I got it. You want the link to the case? Good. I'll give it to you in the description below. You want the link to the screen protector? Although I don't advise the screen protector, I'm getting a new one soon. But if you still want a screen protector for the time being, I'll link this in the description below. I have a wireless charger for it, I'll link that in the description below. All, all of those products under 30 bucks, or well, at least I hope the wireless charger is under 30 bucks. I don't remember. I bought that a little while ago. But I know these two are definitely under 20 bucks even, so you'll be fine really and truly you can get the, you can get this phone so let's say you want the 256 right you want the 256 gig 10s max fine okay so with tax and everything included on top of apple care that you have to get with the program the whole phone will cost you roughly around 13 close to 1400 dollars right 799 plus your taxes and everything and then the rest of the money that you have to spend to get the 10s or 10s max put that in the apple watch so you get two products instead of one that's the thought process that i got for you guys you guys got to understand that saving money put the money in the right places and you'll get more than one thing for the same price as one device which is the 10s or 10s max don't worry about the screen i'm telling you don't worry about it and if you join the payment program for this phone then Godspeed, you did a good job because you know what? You're only gonna pay half and then next year you can get the iPhone 11, which is gonna be a really big change, okay? They're talking about triple lens cameras and crazy true depth sensors and horizontal, you know, uh, face ID and all that craziness. By the way, face ID is the best unlock system ever, especially in this cold weather when I got gloves on. I don't need to worry about a fingerprint sensor. I just look, it, just look at it, it looks at me and done, that's it. <laughs> I love that, but yeah. What you gonna go and spend all that money for? You don't need that. You don't need the 10s and 10s Max. I mean, yeah, you're gonna upgrade to the next phone the next year. That's the better upgrade. Get this. Save the money. Save the money and get this. This is a damn good phone. Battery life is damn good. Cell quality, phone quality is damn good. I love iMessage. I love the way how I get better optimization for apps on this versus Android. Instagram looks better. Snapchat looks better. Everything just looks overall better. I'm so happy that I made this purchase. The phone takes amazing quality pictures, it takes amazing quality video, it has optical image stabilization, it has portrait mode. Why are you doubting this phone? 
don't doubt the phone. The phone is great. $7.99 plus Apple Care, all that goodness. You're going to be paying $39.50 every month on whatever credit card you link to the account. Then you're golden. Don't fuss. Don't fret. Don't listen to the other reviewers. You don't have to spend $800 plus dollars the day of. You don't have to do that. Apple is giving you the choice to join the program so you can pay the phone. And even if you don't want the next phone the next year, it's still going to be $39.50 for, the, for two years. That's what it is. It's $39.50 for two years. Even if you don't want the next phone, it's okay. You pay the $39.50. Done deal. You get Apple Care coverage, all that shit. Done. Good. Ready to go. Gold. Final verdicts on this phone. Get it. If you're looking for the iOS device of the year in terms of the cell phones that Apple gives you, this is the phone to get. You get colors to it, and you get the nice aluminum railing to it. You get the great camera. It's still the same camera that's on the XS and XS Max. It's just one less lens. There's no telephoto, but I don't care about that. You get Face ID, all that stuff. You get the liquid retina display, liquid, liquid retina HD display, whatever it's called. <laughs> You get the great speakers. You get the good. You get the good call quality. You get everything good about this. This is my overall experience with this phone. It's been nothing but greatness. Thank you for watching. I know y'all noticed the new Spacey gear. Check it out. Check it out. <laughs> Even the hat. Oh, and check this out too. Yeah, nice, eh? I'm gonna link. I'm going to link the Spacey Tropics website in the bottom of this video because the Spacey Tropics website will be up. It'll only have two products, one long sleeve and this this hoodie and this hat. I'm not going to count it. Uh, when I say products, I mean, um, you know, apparel. Well, okay, it counts as apparel. Three products. There you go. Hat, hoodie, and a t-shirt. Well, not t-shirt, but a long sleeve just because, you know, tis the season to be folly because it's not Christmas yet. Right. Anyways, <laughs> thank you for watching. Go follow the Spacey Tropics stuff. Uh, follow Spacey Tropics Instagram. It's going to be in the description below. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Share it because I know there's people out there that are confused on whether to get the 10R or some other phone. And they really want the 10R, but somebody is telling them no. Send them this video. Share to them this video. And show them that this is a pretty damn good phone and they have nothing to worry about. All right. Thank you for watching. Tune into the next video. Catch y'all.